Hey guys, welcome to another video. I have shared with you a lot about my time on dialysis and recovery from kidney transplant, but I have never really talked about my kidney failure. I believe my experience is a pretty good lesson of what not to do to avoid accelerating kidney damage. That is what I would like to share with you guys today. But before that, let me invite you to follow me on this journey by subscribing to my channel. start by taking you back to the time the phrase chronic kidney disease was introduced into my life for the first time. So in 2005, I had a high fever and I was sent to the hospital. I was about five months pregnant at the time. My fever was so high, the doctor said it was literally off the chart. Uh, they had to calculate some other way because it seemed that the thermometer was maxed out. Um, let me tell you, nothing that has happened to me lately tops the pain and discomfort I went through that day. I was laid on a ice blanket to bring my temperature down. The cold I was feeling was excruciating, but eventually the fever subsided, um, but that caused me uh, pneumonia. I spent about 10 days all together in the hospital. The fever was caused by a kidney infection and it was then uh, when I was told that I have chronic kidney disease. At the time I was at stage 2, almost 3, when I was diagnosed. They referred me to a nephrologist, did tons of tests and put me on a high dose of prednisone in hopes to regain some function. That didn't work, it only did what prednisone does best, it gave me uh, the moon face. <laughs> the diagnosis was FSGS, focal segmental glomerulus sclerosis. No clue what caused it, or when did it start, or why did it start, I just had it. I started going to get lab work done every six months, uh, then every year, and just like that, 12 years went by. A nephrologist that I saw at Penn State in Pennsylvania actually told me once that it was very possible that I was never going to need dialysis or a kidney transplant um, because my numbers were really not changing. Not the case, but it was pretty good at the time to hear that. So it was at the end of 2018 when things just started to change drastically. Um, even though at that point in my life, my diet was probably the be better than ever and I was definitely physically active. Despite all that, my creatine is just started to, e to increase very rapidly. I started to have symptoms. I remember I was very tired. I was itchy. I, was, I had nausea from time to time. And also I was having headaches uh, pretty much every day. At that moment, I didn't saw the big picture. I just knew, you know, I had chronic kidney disease. This is what's supposed to happen at some point. But today, looking back, I know exactly what caused me to go from being stable for so many years to literally kidney failure in a matter of months. At that time in my life, I was living by far the most stressful years of my life. A lot of things happened, including the loss of family members. I was also a business owner. It was, it was just a period in my life where stress was a constant thing. And I think the biggest issue was that I never did anything to manage it. You know, we don't see stress as a, as a problem. At least I didn't. At the time, I just dealt with it. And took one day at a time, but I never did anything to to help myself in that area. You know, today I understand perfectly that stress is, is super dangerous, especially when you already have an underlying condition like I did. So by the end of 2019, I started the evaluation process to get on the transplant list in North Carolina. Unfortunately, a whole disruption came 
along with the pandemic, I ended up moving from North Carolina to California in the middle of the evaluation process. Took some time to get things going with the new hospital in Pretty much, I just ran out of time. My creatine was 9.5 and my kidney function was only at about 7% when my doctor here uh, told me that my best option was to start dialysis. Actually, I remember his words and I, don't, and I think what he said that day, I will never forget in my life. And he said, and I quote, you need to start dialysis ASAP because you don't have six months in you. It's not easy, I promise you, it's not easy to hear that. I think that's the moment where you are faced with the reality of what it means to have chronic kidney disease. At that point, physically, I felt very sick, very tired. I was cold all the time. I think for me, feeling lethargic was the hardest thing to deal with. I remember I was resting two hours and then I got up and did something for an hour or so and then I had to go back and rest in order to get up again at some point. During that time, emotionally, I was, I was very happy. I mean, not because I was sick, but once I passed all the stress and I moved here, I was new to California and I found it so beautiful here, sunny, it open, you know, I could see the distance. It was, it was amazing. When I had energy, I was out walking, you know, just taking the scenery, um, not getting to know the place. And I think that, you know, that helped me tons, that helped me a lot. I believe California was the perfect place for me to come and deal with everything that I went through with kidney failure and dialysis. I had a PD catheter surgery on December 4, 2020, and I started emergency dialysis only three, three days after having the, the catheter put in. Usually they let the catheter heal at least for two weeks before using it, but I was very sick at that point, so it made total sense. Um, I was on peritoneal dialysis for nine months until I finally finished my evaluation here. And thanks to my donor, my transplant day was a sketch. So guys, my advice to you is no matter where you are in life, sick or healthy, do your best to avoid stress. Sometimes we, we focus so much on diet and exercise. And don't get me wrong, that's very important. But most of the time we ignore stress. It's not talk about like diets and, and exercise routines. If I could go back in time, I will put all my energy into avoiding or reducing stress. There is no doubt in my mind about that. And I know avoiding stress sometimes is, is not a thing, but at least do something to manage it. Even now that I feel better, that I have my transplant, I'm feeling great and everything, I find myself on very stressful days, you know, having very stressful days. The thing is that now I have this so present within me and I do my best, you have no idea. I do my best to try to bring that stress down because I know, I know for a fact how bad it can be. This is all I have for you guys today. Stay strong, stay healthy, and most of all, stay positive. I'll see you guys in my next video.